Here we go. So good morning and good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, the 15th uh, of August. We're halfway through the month already. Um, last week, we spoke about teamwork. And um, unfortunately, um, halfway through my, uh, the, the webinar, my computer glitched and shut down. And I had to reboot and restart and jump back in again. Um, and the consequence of that was the recording got lost. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, but I have had people come back to me and say, can we please have that same subject again? Uh, that was really worthwhile. Um, it, can you do it again and record it and what have you? So it'll probably be a slightly different presentation today to last week. Um, because I guess the, the, the energy feeling and flow and what have you varies from call to call, doesn't it? But um, nonetheless, I do want to respect the requests and touch upon, uh, again, this, this subject of teamwork. Um, I want to begin by sharing experience. When I uh, worked a number of years ago for Amway, uh, I had the privilege of working with someone who became a, a friend of mine, uh, who I believe was perhaps the greatest networker in the United Kingdom uh, in its history. Uh, and why do I say that? Uh, when he'd put his team meetings on, uh, he'd do them three times a year, and he would garner between 30 and 40,000 people to his team meetings three times a year. And, and this isn't in America where you've got the American dream. Uh, you don't have a great British dream. <laughs> you just got gray clouds. And that's kind of reflective of the attitude sometimes. Um, so, so to do it in a, in a slightly more pessimistic country uh, was extra impressive to me. And I was having a, a visit with them once and I asked, I said, what, what is the, the key in your eyes to creating a great, network to really building a success here and and he hesitated he didn't hesitate at all he responded um instantly the answer was right there he, he knew it because it was deliberate for him um and, and that in itself was instructive to me he didn't sit and pause and go well maybe it's this or that it just came straight out of his mouth and he said it's all about creating a team that people want to belong to yeah that's what it's all about create a club that people want to be a part of uh, and I think that's really important, isn't it? That uh, as we look at the three fundamental skills that are needed to build a successful network marketing business, one, we need to be able to go out and gather customers. Two, we need to know how to recruit business partners, distributors that will go out and do the same. And three, we need to build a team or a community or a club that people want to belong to. I've seen many people that are out there that are wonderfully successful in finding customers. I've seen people that are wonderfully successful in recruiting people all the time. Um, but doing those two things in isolation or without the teamwork, without the spirit of team, that sense of belonging, that community, uh, they find themselves struggling, vacillating, um, kind of hitting a peak that is far too down the line from where it should be. So the solution really is what can we do to build a strong and meaningful team. And uh, I want to share with you some thoughts that have been, again, that they come as a result of some research. I always like to share research. And this was found, um, just for context, um, on the Forbes.com website, uh, which is a great source of information around business development and business strategy and so on. And, uh, and they, they talk about some critical findings that they had. They, they included some, some research, put together some research that um, interviewed, studied, surveyed 350,000 people. Um, and, and the subject was, you know, what measures the characteristics of productive teams? That's quite a study, isn't it? Quite a survey. And certainly something that we can learn from as a, as a result of their findings. Um, but I, I want to share some things here that I think are valuable for each of us. One, they're good reminders for us. Um, but two, hopefully, more importantly, they can be great messages of reassurance. Uh, and I'll get to that point in a second because part of my objective today in sharing this message on teams isn't so much to give instruction on how we can do better. But sometimes we need to get the reassurance that we're on the right track and we're doing okay. It's very, very common in my experience um, that when people aren't quite getting the results that they want, they personalize their problems. They personify them. They go, 
my, my results aren't good, therefore I am not good. And that's a terrible mindset to have, isn't it? Um, but it's very easy for us to do that, to say, oh, this activity, this campaign, or this plan that I tried to put together uh, it turned out kind of bad. Therefore, I am bad. We, we want to avoid that language. So my objective today is one, to share some evidence of what makes a good team. Um, and two, for us to be able to recognize that that does actually exist where we are and we are doing a lot of good things right uh, and very much worthwhile. So like I said, some evidence, but also hopefully some great reassurances as well. So here's point number one. I'm gonna share just four things today. The first one, and like I said, as I do share these points, I do want you to reflect on how this works with your immediate team and your collective team as a part of NECAM. How, how do these two fit together? How does this message um, reflect itself in your own experience of your team? So point number one, great teams always have a noble cause. Isn't that interesting? They have a noble cause. We always talk about in NECAM, you know, leading with why. And I think Simon Sinek has wonderfully quoted multiple times over all around the world in the NECAM audience because his message of start with why just resonates with us. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And in order for us to have a meaningful business experience where we can feel like we're succeeding and pursuing something worthwhile, our cause needs to be greater than ourselves. Uh, an example was once given to me uh, when I was the managing director of Europe. Um, and it was actually by uh, another distributor who said, um, if your goal, he said, let's say that you were not, you know, you know in, in Nikan, let's say you were working for Mercedes-Benz as a, as a brand, for example, and you're their general manager or managing director. If your goal as the CEO or managing director, whichever title you wish to give, if your goal was to create enough sales volume in the company to pay your salary, would that company be stable and secure or dangerously insecure? It'd be the latter, wouldn't it? If our goal is simply to generate enough money to hook us up, then we're on the wrong path. We've got to find, as we've pointed out a number of times already, that success ensues. We don't pursue it, it follows. If we do what's right, the consequence follows as a result. Um, so if we have a noble cause, then success can follow on from that as a consequence. Now, I love that because I think that really resonates with each of us here in NECAN. Uh, we have a noble cause. We want to help humans become more. Humans being more is our mantra. Um, the five pillars of health, healthy mind, body, family, society, and finances, uh, is really our driving force, helping people get better balance in their lives and doing that through those five pillars. A wonderful message. I had the great privilege this morning of uh, doing an ABC uh, with a silver in the UK and a prospect of hers. And uh, the driving force for her prospect uh, was she wanted to be a part of something that had value and meaning and that resonated with her own course. And what she saw in speaking with us in talking about NECAN was, I can be a part of something bigger here. I can be involved in something that makes a difference. Um, and what was the consequence of that? Uh, she wanted to sign up. Yeah, so when people see a cause, see a value, they wanna be a part of it. They wanna be able to move forward. And research shows that engagement and improvement in performance increases um, as a consequence of that. So I think that's really important that we, we tap into that. Point number two, effective teams drive engagement. Um, and this is interesting, is I'll share a statistic here. Uh, there was research that showed that um, engaged employees in an organization grew by 11%. I know 11% might not seem like a huge number when we're talking in our current terms, but the reality is in organizations of a meaningful size, 11% is a significant and fairly large number. And it grew by that amount because the people felt that they were a part of a motivating team. They received recognition uh, from their peers and they could see how their work contributed to the greater good. 
So by driving engagement within the team, uh, we can see improvement in our performance. How does that correlate or compute in Nikan terms? I will share with you one example. Um, maybe I might be a gold or a platinum. Let me, let me pick a rank here, somewhere in the mid-levels. And uh, I'm having a local meeting and I want it to run smoothly. So what I'm going to ensure happens is I do it all myself. Can you see the problem there? We've got to be willing to let other people have a go and maybe struggle, learn, and get it right the next time in order for us to grow our teams and build engagement. If we do everything ourselves because we have confidence in only us, uh, we don't send a good message to our team. And of course, we neither train them or engage them. And if they're not engaged and they're not feeling trained, and of course, engagement in these types of activities is also a wonderful way of providing recognition. Yeah, I see that you can do really good at this. Therefore, I'd like you to take responsibility for this aspect of the meeting on Saturday. Uh, is a great way to provide recognition as well as improve engagement. But it's very, very important to have a successful team that we drive engagement and participation in that team. The third point, and this is really interesting, performance is driven by team, not company loyalty. And uh, listen, I'm going to read this out. It says, here is one of our biggest findings, and CEOs hate it. People are more loyal to their teams than they are to their companies. That's interesting, that isn't it? They gave the example, we all love our country, but we're more loyal to our family. Yeah, I could. Uh, the first example that sprung to mind outside of that was a football example. I'm talking about English football here, soccer. Uh, people in England love soccer, love football. Um, but specifically, my father-in-law is overwhelmingly loyal and devoted beyond description to the Liverpool Football Club. He does not believe in God. He is somewhat of an atheist. Um, and he says, you can sprinkle my ashes anywhere you like. And jokingly, my wife says, well, maybe we'll sprinkle them over the Manchester United football grounds, which are, of course, the main competitor to Liverpool. Don't you dare. <laughs> you can sprinkle them anywhere else, but do not sprinkle them over Manchester United. Um, the reality is, I say that in jest, he is ridiculously, um, yeah, yeah, just overwhelmingly devoted to his team, to his team. And uh, when he talks about Liverpool, it's us, it's we. It's not them, it's us. Even though he sits on the couch to watch the game. People are more loyal to their teams than to anything else. And I think that's very, very important to emphasize. The greatest asset that any of us have in a network marketing business, we don't have bricks and mortar, do we? Uh, we don't have bricks and mortar. We don't have fixed costs. Fixed, we don't have warehouses. We don't have stock loads of product. What is our greatest asset? It is our team. And so it's very, very important that we recognize that over time, loyalty to the team becomes stronger than anything else. And that's just a statistical fact that even in regular conventional businesses, people are more loyal to their teams than they are to the companies they work for. When that team gets disrupted, if a manager um, goes somewhere else or if it gets broken down or what have you, then the team starts to scatter, doesn't it? And it's very, very important to recognize the devotion people have to a team, which means, again, we want to strengthen it by improving the engagement and improving the contribution um, and strengthening the cause. Uh, the last point I wanted to emphasize was great teams simplify. And I really like this point. Um, we often use this word simple. Simple doesn't mean easy. And I also heard it said that simplicity is at the far end of complexity. Um, sometimes it can be quite a task to take something that is quite complex and make it simple. Uh, I have found that um, one of the best ways to learn of my own ignorance is to have a conversation with my kids where they can ask me any question they like. Um, why is the sky blue, Daddy? Why is grass... That's a good question. What is wind? That's actually kind of difficult to answer. I kind of know what it is. I know what it feels like. You know, describe what it is. Uh, that's kind of, you know, you're putting me on the spot here. You know, they, they can come up with fantastic questions that seem so simple, 
yet so complicated. So to be able to take something that can be as complex as network marketing, because it isn't always straightforward, and put it into simple terms is very, very important. Just got a, qu a comment here from Michelle. Of course, team, together, everyone achieves more. And uh, that other one that I love as well, there's no I in team. Uh, very, very true in that point as well. But this, this, uh, this company here that's done the research said they wanted to distill team rules down to three things. And I really like this, distill the rules down to three things. That's simplification. These are their rules that they recommended. Rule number one, wow. Rule number two, no surprises. And rule number three, cheer. So what does this mean? It means, rule number one, in short, it means that everyone on the team is committed to a world-class experience with their customers, with their business partners. We want to create a wow effect. So what do we do to ensure that they experience that wow? That they, that they feel like, as a customer of ours, they are one of our greatest heroes. Uh, we are their champions. Uh, as a business partner, what do people feel from us that make them go, wow, uh, this is you know, world-class, world-leading. The next one, no surprises, is in the form of communication. Uh, we need to make sure that we have open dialogue, open communication, that there's no surprises. Um, that can happen a lot, can't it, in a big business, that all of a sudden you find out from the wrong source that something's happened, something changes, there's a new product out or there is a product that's being removed or what have you. you. Want to make sure that to have a strong, solid team, there are no surprises. It has been said countless times that communication is king. It really is. And the more I learn about business and managing people and leading businesses and teams, the more I realize that as simple as that is uh, to say that communication is king, the challenge is always in its execution. We need to be vigilant with that point, and do our best to, to communicate and recognize what would be some of the surprises you wouldn't want to have. That maybe one of your team is just rank advanced. Why should that be a surprise? That would be devastating, wouldn't it? We want to be at the forefront of that to champion and to cheer, which leads us to rule number three. Rule number three is cheer. We need to make sure that we root for and cheer for one another. We want to have a healthy dose of recognition. And you know, really what we've found here in, in NECAN and in network marketing, a key driver to success in this business is the chance to recognize people's successes. It has been said, what you, what you recognize, you repeat. So whatever you want repeated is something we should recognize and celebrate. That's really, really important to stress that. If you want people to have strong customer acquisition when you get a brand new person that's just gone out there and found five new customers in their first week, you wanna shout that from the rooftops. You wanna make them feel wonderful about that so that they feel great for it, wanna keep doing it. And then of course other people see it and they wanna get that recognition too. That sounds like a good thing to be doing. The best way to teach people is through celebration. Sometimes we can get caught up in the formalities, can't we, of instruction, when the best way to teach and to lead is by celebrating people's successes and accomplishments. Because right there in the recognition is the instruction. And it's done in a very motivating way. So these are four things that I hope are helpful for each of us in recognizing um, the value of teamwork in our business. But I want to go through again and highlight that these are things that I see in our team. These four things, again, by, uh, by just as a quick reminder, uh, we have a noble cause, rule number one. Do we have that? Do you feel that in Niken? Do you feel that in your team environment that you are building and driving something that has a noble cause? If so, give yourself a wonderful pat on the back. Um, point number two, we drive engagement. Do you feel engaged with your team? Do you feel you have a voice? Do you feel like you can contribute, like you are participating? Do you feel like others in your organization are doing the same? That you are plugged in to a system of support where your voice is heard, where your activities are recognized, and where you are helped where required. Where you can feel like what you're doing makes a difference. I really hope so. I really, really hope so. I had a meeting today, as I've mentioned before, 
Now, Tuesday afternoons, 12.30 UK time, I do a call for the UK distributors. Uh, it's, it's actually for their prospects. Uh, you can only come on the call as a distributor if you have a guest. If you don't have a guest, uh, you're not invited to attend. Uh, not because we want to boot people off, but because we want to have a clear focus for the call. Now, on average right now, as we're just getting started, uh, the numbers on that call are pretty low. It's just we're just getting going. Uh, awareness is just starting to take root. Um, but each week I've got uh, a few new people that are listening to the call and I'm having interaction with on that level. Uh, what is wonderful is the conversion rate from that little call, that little moment of 30 minutes, uh, is tremendous. And each week we have new people joining the business as a result. Um, a little effort can go a wonderful way in making a big difference in someone else's business. Um, like I said, this morning's call, just as an example, this afternoon's was with, um, we had two people on the call, uh, a new silver who had joined the business in November of last year and a brand new prospect of hers that she had met for the first time um, live on our call. The outcome was fantastic. Uh, we had a wonderful meeting and the conclusion was her prospect is joining the business. It's a little thing to do, but it can go a long way. Just that little piece of time, either from my end or from the other person's end. We need to recognize that what we are doing does make a difference. And if you weren't successful, for example, uh, using today's call as an example, if, if the lady had said thanks but no thanks, would that have been a wasted effort? Would that have been time spent in vain? Absolutely not, because what am I showing? I'm showing Caroline, the lady that was on the call today, that I'm here for her, that I'm a part of her team, that she's got support and help. Does that go a long way? Absolutely. She's way down my organization um, and perhaps potentially well outside of my pay line. Uh, so why would I do that? Because it helps her upline as well. And they feel supported. They feel appreciative. They feel like we're building a team. So whether it is a direct or indirect result, the value of our contributions is meaningful. And um, I want you to know from where I stand uh, as a Royal Diamond in the business, as I look out and see each of your faces um, that are plugged into these calls each week, uh, I want you to know that seeing your faces and seeing your names pop up on these calls means a lot to me. Uh, that your contribution, your engagement, your participation uh, is a blessing to me and to my life. Uh, what I do to reciprocate is just that. It's an effort to reciprocate, to give back what is already being given out to me. Um, so I want you to feel that your role is valued. The part that you play um, is respected, appreciated, and meaningful. Please continue. Keep doing it. It's worth every effort. Um, and of course, like I said, the biggest thing that we can do as leaders in our business, whether we're uh, direct, executive, uh, silver or beyond, one of the greatest tasks that we have is to be wonderful cheerleaders to our teams, to let them know that they're loved, to let them know that they're valued, let them know that they're supported and encouraged every step of the way. That is the best form of instruction, uh, the best way to build a team that I know is to go out there and to celebrate with people, to cheer them on and to give them all the encouragement that they can possibly get. Um, because that is what can drive a business better than anything else. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you feel that you're a part of something bigger. I hope you feel respected and loved. I hope you feel that your part means something and makes a difference and contributes. Um, I hope that you also recognize uh, that contribution and participation can really make a big difference. And of course, let's keep it simple with our rules. I think we've got them down pat. Wow, we wanna have that wow factor in what we do. We wanna have open dialogue and clear communication uh, and we wanna be great cheerleaders of each other's successes. We certainly have that. So to that end, I wanna say thank you to each of you for being wonderful teammates and wonderful partners. Um, I say it every week when I'm prospecting and every week when I'm doing ABCs, one of the greatest blessings and benefits that I feel in being in NECAN is being a part of this team. It's the people that I get to rub shoulders with, the friends that I make, um, the relationships that I build, that makes my job so valuable and rewarding. Uh, it's this that makes it count. Uh, everything else is 
fun, valuable, sometimes not so fun, but necessary. Um, but really what makes it count is the relationships that we get to share with each other. So thank you very much. Um, please, again, um, share this message. Let your teams know what is the call to action today. I would say reach out to people in your downline, in your crossline, in your upline, whichever way, the way you work. Let people know that they're valued. Let them know they're appreciated. Share the love. Pass it out. Spread it around because it'll make a world of difference. I promise you that. So thank you all very much. There's a little note coming out really quickly from Madeline. They have a meeting tonight with Randy Rolf, uh, and Madeline will be co-hosting. It's going to be on Zoom, madelinezoom.com. Um, that's going to be at 7 p.m. this evening. Um, which time zone is that going to be, Madeline? Can you just, Eastern time, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so please make a note of that, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And um, please spread the word, join in, be a part of it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great week. Take care.